Okay. Neurons are nervous system. It's very big. This is a complicated system. Very sensitive system. Or uh, <clears throat> nervous system. Not only human body, the all animals, all vertebrates. The vertebrates contains the nervous system. In this, in this system is balancing. What it is in homostasis, the balancing of human body. What is health? The both physical and the mental well being is good health. The healthiest body. The physically and the mentally is, is in healthy, is stable, it is good health. So the neuron system is, is helps to maintain the homostasis of human body, its balance. A series of sensory receptors is, is can work in a in 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 nerves the nervous system which totally provides the information about the changes both internal and external external humid conditions or hot conditions all all weather conditions or else any disaster wise then immediately the internal in the body changes out to the next thought and next step. It is the next. This is all the things we'll estimate to the nervous system. The human nervous system is a complex one. It is an interconnected system, which is a larger system, or in a comprised okay, <clears throat> smaller subsystems to each of in which which have in a specific the structures with a specific functions. Every individual neuron is an individual functions we will identify. The basic structure of structure and function of neuron. See, the neurons, it contains the dendrites, axon, the biggest axon and uh, the terminates, the terminals and fibers in the axon, the soma, the soma is in a, the cell body and the neuron have contains the nucleus, particular nucleus. See the basic structure of the neuron. Okay. The neurons in the cell body, the dendrites, X on the neurons. Cell body is the main process of the center of the cell. The dendrites, which is the thin branching extension of the cell body, is, is conducts the narrow impulses towards, towards the cell body. You see the difference between dendrites and axon. The thin Thin branching extension of the, the cell body is conducts the nerve impulses towards the cell body. But at the same time, the axon, a single branch in which the conducts the nerve pulses away from the, the cell body. So it carries the information but in the dendrites, it carries towards the, the cell body. The reply information is through axons and receiving information is through to dendrites. Across the 
synapse to the next neuron. Number of neurons, one time that is conducts, is connects just like this in plug points, like this the, the terminal end fibers. It can work out. Within a fraction of seconds, the entire the, the neuron circuit is, is communicated. The neuron A to neuron B is in between in the neurotransmitters. In the neurotransmitter, like is in a is synapse, who is in excitability conductivity in all. All the cases, all neurons have say, two basic the properties, those are in efferent and efferent. EFFERENT, EFFERENT, efferent. Efferent neurons is in a motor, motor skills. Efferent is in sensory, sensory skills. And third, third one is in our. Uh, interneuron. The efferent, neur uh, efferent uh, neurons is, is, in, is conveys the information from the central nervous system CNS to muscles and glands. So motor skill set carries. And efferent, EFFRENT, efferent is in sensory. It carries the information from the, the sensory receptors to central nervous system. Like a skin, skin, smell, ear, vision, taste, everything is a lot comes under sensory. Sensory information, received hot and cold, just to, to, to the skin. The taste is in a bad, tasteless, is in a, a good food, like and sounds. Sounds point of view also, and the visibility is all our sensory, through sensory organs, through central nervous system, the information it can pass. And the interneuron, it carries the process of sensory to information. So interneurons, the functionalities, are these three types of interneuron, efferent and different. Different uh, the effort, the motor and the uh, sensory. Here it is the dendrite. The dendrites in both the cases, but it's in a, the receptor of the cell. In in sensory neurons, efferent one. The exon. In all the cases, the exons is there. The exons in Myelin sheath. The myelin sheath is covers in both efferent and efferent, but in interneurons, so no myelin sheath is not at cover. And neurofibril nodes, neurofibril nodes is also both motor and uh, in the sensory neurons. Yeah. <clears throat> Next. Neuroglia. The neuroglia, it supports, it protects, it connects and remove debris from the neuron systems. Three types of neuroglia cells we will identify. These are in astrocytes, Oligodendro, oligodendro, dendroglia, and uh, microglia. These are all our neuroglias. Astrocytes, oligodendroglia, and um, <coughs> microglia. These are all our gives the support, products, connects, and remove the debris from the nervous system. The major functionality of this. These uh, these neuroglias. Nervous system. 
is the very longest one, the non-stop one. The all, all bodily activities, the voluntarily and involuntarily are controlled by the neuron system. The two major components is one is the central nervous system, CNS, and another one is the peripheral nervous system, PNS. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is made up of all the, of the nerves that lead to and out of the central nervous system. It's not at its control to the central nervous system, but all of sudden, sudden decisions through this, it's, it's all are made up of, sort of nerves. It's, it's peripheral nervous system, and cerebral, central nervous system comes from brain and the spinal cord. Yeah, the central nervous system. Central nervous system is composed of the two major um, interconnected organs. One is the brain and another one is spinal cord. These organs can work together, is integrate, is coordinate, coordinate sensory and the major information for the purposes of controlling the various tissues, organs, and organ systems the body. Central nervous system is responsible for the higher neural functions and such as in the memory, learning and emotions. The central nervous system is in memory. The major thing is in the memory. The instants, the rate of instants, incidental memory, the, through that only the actions, the further actions, in future actions. And uh, the learning, the motor skills. Before the time, what what is in a learning in that particular uh, um, the work or function or whatever to learn how to across to that one. Next is emotions. Emotions is in a nation that is in a what is the shell of sudden. But at the same time, immediate activity uh, actions and according to the um, old memories and the learnings through. Next is the brain. You see the brain has the lobes. The frontal lobe, the partial lobes, and uh, occipital lobes, cerebellum, cerebrum, cerebrum is the frontal part is the cerebrum, and cerebellum is the beneath of the, the brain, and uh, the spinal cord, and the brain stem, and temporal, <clears throat> temporal lobe, and uh, the left hemisphere. Left hemisphere and right hemispheres yeah. is both are in the covers. Yeah, the weight about of you know, three pounds of three pounds in adults. It's a, it's a good, healthy, healthiest adult. The brain weight is in three pounds and seventy-five percent of the water it contains. Twenty-five, twenty percent of the oxygen it contains of one hundred. 100 billion neurons in a good and a healthy brain and it controls the body the bodily functions and the interactions with the outside of the world this is the capacity of the brain is 100 billion neurons in shell the four parts in cerebellum they and Diencephalons, the brain stem, and the cerebellum. Cerebrum, cerebellum, and the brain stem, and diencephalosis. Encephalons. 
These are all all lobes. If each and every lobe is in their individual functions, the brain stem. It's made up of midbrain, the pons and pons and and the modula. Modula is oblongata, medulla oblongata, modula oblongata, or medulla oblongata. The pons and the medulla oblongata is all in the midbrain. The midbrain is involved. It's in visual reflections. Pons. The pons are located between the, the midbrain and uh, medulla oblongata and controls controls certain respiratory functions. Medulla oblongata, it contains centers that regulate the, the heal regulates the heart and the lung functioning and, and swallowing and, uh, and coughing, vomiting, sneezing, all these are the controls by the medulla oblongata. And pons is, is can control some responsibility, some functions, from respiratory functions is by pons. Next is the cerebellum is a beneath of the brain, the bottom of the brain, or the coordinates the musculoskeletal movements to the maintain the posterior balances and muscle, muscle tone and uh, inferior to the occipital lobes of the cerebrum and posterior to the pond of the medulla oblongata. Yeah, both the cases, the inferior and the posterior, the sides of this muscular, the muscular the skeletal movements uh, is influenced by the cerebellum. Next is the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the frontal part of the, the brain is located about the cerebellum. It contains up to two hemispheres with an, an outer portion is a, called as the cerebral cortex. These two hemispheres are a, connected by the, the bridge of the narrow fibers that is the RND information between the two hemispheres is called as the, the corpus. Corpus cellulosum. Corpus cellulosum. The left and right lobes of each is divided into the four lobes or parts of uh, the partial lobes, frontal lobes, uh, and the temporal lobes, and uh, occipital lobes. This, these are classified. And uh, diencephalon. Diencephalon is in a deep portion of the brain containing of the thalamus, hypothalamus, and epithalamus, and uh, ventral thalamus. These are all thalamus we are identifying in the brain uh, diagram. Yeah, it's the deepest portion inside of this. We identify this thalamus. Yeah, now she is in a skull part and pi matter, pi, pi matter, and uh, dura matter, pi matter. And all these are the thalamus, and all these we can identify the heart rate, the blood pressures, temperature controls, behavioral responses, and the digestive functions, the water and alcoholic balances. serves as in a, a the real real central and uh, sensational uh, links okay sensitivity and the motor skills and um, 
the intramuscular movements of the intraskeletal muscles, skeletal movements also. The spinal cord, you know, it extends from the, the medulla oblongata of the brain to or it's in, around the, the first the lumbar vertebrata in the lower bank and the nerves from the and nerves from the peripheral nerve systems to extend it out of out from the spinal cord. It's protected by vertebral columns and uh, the cerebrospinal fluids and meninges. Meninges are three layers, the membranes, those are covered to the, the brain and the spinal. These are all, all functions is the controls by the spinal cord, spinal cord nerves is up to extend it to the spinal cord, vertebra and the lumbar vertebra in up to the lower, lower bank, it passes on. And the layers of the membranes, it's in a dura matter, is outer through fiber, outer through fibers membrane and uh, arcinoid matter and pia matter. Arcinoid matter is in the middle, middle web-like membrane and the central systems. And the inter innermost layers is containing of several blood vessels. Yeah, these, these are all the members in the, in, in the beneath of the skeleton immediate of the, the skeleton the inside of the in the scale, skull not a skeleton the inside of the skull it is takes place this is the, the human brain and spinal cord is connected to that and this this the longest spinal cord is also again it's in a pot space we will identify you see the peripheral nervous system PNS is in ganglia and uh, specialized sensory sensory structures that has as in the systems it carries the sensory and the motor information between the central nervous system and all other organs in the tissues of the body. And the peripheral nervous system is is functionally is divided into two major the divisions the sensory efferent division and the sensory or efferent division, the motor or efferent division. This is the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Spinal cord and peripheral nervous systems. And the spinal cord connect connectivity is major. A somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system we will see. The next is the 12 pairs of nerves, 31 pairs of spinal nerves. Yeah, this consists of central nervous system, 12, 12 pairs. But 31 pairs of spinal cord nerves. Olfactory, the olfactory nervous system, it works out in the, in the sense of the smell. The optic nervous system is in a sense of the vision. And the oculomotor is eye and the movement. And procula is aids in muscles and move of the eyes, eyes around us. And the trigminal is an eye, tear glands, eyes, tear glands, and a scrap, forehead, teeth, gums, lips, and uh, the mouth muscles, mouth muscles. Next is in ebudescence. Every sense is in a muscle, is in condition. This is a mu muscular conditions. 
the muzzles and its finishing is always is a muzzle clamp piece or is in, in, in move, muzzle uh, movements totally here yeah, it identified and facial it's a tasty and facial expressions and tears and uh, salivary glands all these and vestibulo uh, vestibulo cochlear is an uh, hearing and equilibrium and gaso phyro phyrogalal is in pharynx and tonsils of tongue and uh, cortoid arteries means is in a smooth uh, what it is skeleton and stimulates stimulate salivary glands and vagus in a speech and swelling and hot muscles and smooth muscles and septum glands is in accessory is in a muscles of this the soft plates and pyrenox and luranox and the neck and hypo hypogracial is the last pair of the central nervous system you see in the tongue movements the tongue movements is in hypoglossal hypoglossal this type of all 12 pairs of central nerves and 31 pairs of spinal cord the connectivity nerves in nervous system we are identify all of you remember this yeah this 31 the pairs to spinal cord is how it is connected with digestive in the pancreas through and uh, intestines big intestines the small intestines the rectum and uh, symptomatic ganglia yes yeah, yes ganglia on thoracic nerves These are in the cervical nerves, is in seven, and the ganglion, and the thoracic nerves, lumbar nerves, and the, the scalar nerves, lumbar and the scalar, and um, coxoguinal nerves. These are all in a in a total thirty-one nerves in spinal cords. Cervical nerves is in the seven nerves. You will identify it. It is in a trachea, it is in a bronchia, in the locomotive glands. All these, yeah. Symptomatic nervous system, somatic nervous system, and uh, autonomic nervous system. See, these both. So there is a the uh, responsibility. See, the responsibility for the receiving of the processing sensor. The sensory input from the skin and muscles and uh, uh, tendons and the joints in eyes, in the tongue and nose and ears, as well as excited the voluntary uh, contractions in the skeletal muscles. These are all are in the, in the somatic nervous system. In autonomic nervous system, it carries the impulses from the central nervous system to glands. These are various. the smooth muscles and cardiac muscles and various muscles, mem membranes organs and glands and senses it is in stimulates in uh, autonomic autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system through central nervous to cns to it carries and uh, somatic is in all the systems to it carries towards the CNS central nervous system. Yeah, this this is is more enough for our uh, uh, neurons and nervous systems. Um, in stopping point of view, the questions is not beyond this. This uh, it's all way of the the short forms, the classification of the nerves and the numbers. 
and nervous systems and all the and uh, um, shape of the the neuron basic parts of the, the neurons if i just to see Synaptic nervous system, central nervous system. The adult human brain weighs approximately one and a half kilograms, making up less than 2% of a person's body weight. And yet, it defines our humanity and makes us the individuals that we are. The brain is responsible for the generation of language and thought, attention, consciousness, memory, and imagination. In order to fit into the skull and accommodate the massive number of neurons and connections needed, the brain is highly folded. This results in the creation of gyri or ridges and sulci or furrows. If we were to unfold the entire human brain, it would take up approximately one square the brain meter. Lobes. Perhaps the most impressive feature of the brain is the amount of connections formed between neurons. There are an estimated 86 billion neurons in the brain, each of which forms an average of 7,000 connections with other neurons resulting in between 100 and 500 trillion synapses within the brain. In an attempt to conceive of the enormity of this system, the number of neurons in the human brain has been equated to the number of stars in the Milky Way. Now that we have begun to appreciate the complexity of the human brain, let's begin to examine its structure. Introduction of central CNS, central nervous system. The brain can be divided into functional and anatomical regions. We will now start with an anatomical overview to establish a common terminology and to describe the areas of the brain. The brain has multiple surfaces. Here we have the superior surface, and this here is the inferior surface. There are also anterior and posterior Posteri aspects to the brain. Here's a section through the brain within the skull, and we can appreciate the axes within the CNS. Connections can travel either towards the anterior pole here, or towards the inferior end of the spinal cord. Fibers can move either rostrally towards the rostral pole or caudally towards the caudal pole. Now let's look at these component parts of the brain. This is the forebrain, which is composed of the cerebral hemispheres and deep structures. The right and left hemispheres are roughly symmetrical and are connected through corpus callosum, which you can see here. Here, we have cut the brain in half, separating the two hemispheres from each other. This is the cut surface of corpus callosum, the largest white matter tract in the brain, 
Impressively, it consists of an estimated 200 to 250 million projections. This structure here is the thalamus. Thalamus. And together with the hypothalamus here and the subthalamus, which you cannot see, it makes up the diencephalon. The cerebral hemispheres and the diencephalon together comprise the forebrain. We now move into the brainstem, which is caudal to the diencephalon. The brainstem can be divided into three parts. The midbrain, located here just caudal to the thalamus, contains the large fiber bundles, the cerebral peduncles, that connect the forebrain with all caudal structures. The pons is located caudal to the midbrain. It is connected to the cerebellum through the cerebellar peduncles. The most caudal part of the brainstem is the medulla. It is continuous with the spinal cord as it exits through foramen magnum of the skull. The cerebellum is embryologically part of the pons, but its functions are so distinct that it is now considered its own entity, separate from the brainstem. The cerebral hemispheres can be divided into lobes along some key surface landmarks. The central sulcus separates the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. The lateral fissure separates the temporal lobe from both the frontal and parietal lobes. The occipital lobe is separated from the parietal lobe via the parietal occipital sulcus, which you can see on this medial aspect of the brain. You can draw a line onto the lateral surface right here to differentiate between <coughs> the occipital <coughs> lobe and the parietal and temporal lobes. In this medial view of the brain, you can identify a continuous strip of cortex which swings around the surface of the brain. This lobe has been dubbed the limbic lobe due to its intimate relationship with the limbic system. It spans the frontal, parietal, and temporal lobes. Deep within the brain are spaces filled with cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF. This is a 3D reconstruction of the ventricular system. You can see the two C-shaped lateral ventricles in the cerebral hemispheres. They have an anterior horn deep within the frontal and parietal lobes of the forebrain, a posterior horn which extends into the occipital lobe and an inferior horn, which extends into the temporal lobe. These lateral ventricles are connected to the third ventricle in the midline. The third ventricle is connected to the fourth ventricle through the cerebral aqueduct. On this mid-sagittal section of the brain, we can identify different components of the ventricular system. This here is the lateral ventricle. The anterior horn will extend anteriorly here into the frontal lobe and the posterior horn will extend into the occipital lobe. This here is the third ventricle. The thalamus is on either side of the third ventricle. The third ventricle connects to the fourth ventricle via the cerebral aqueduct right here. This here is the fourth ventricle at the level of the pons and medulla. The fourth ventricle is going to close off into the central canal. Let's look at the various planes a brain can be sectioned in. This is a very important concept because imaging of the brain uses these planes. I'm going to cut this brain in the coronal plane. You see the basic two part of the brain. So yeah. you can now see corpus callosum here, and we've started to look into the ventricular system. So this is the anterior tip of the anterior horn here. So this next slice will take us into the anterior pole of the temporal lobe right here. And those pieces might fall off because they're not connected to the plane that I'm cutting in. There we go. So let's have a look at that. 
All right, so what you can see on this slide is really the um, lateral ventricle again. We've got the head of the caudate nucleus right there and the putamen. And here, this is the anterior limb of the internal capsule. All right, so in this section now, you can see the two lateral ventricles, as well as the third ventricle here on either side of the thalamus. All right, so here in this section now, you can again see the two lateral ventricles. Here we're going into the cerebral aqueduct on our way to the fourth ventricle. This here is the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. But through okay. all the slides, so in we this added section here again, here are the two lateral ventricles. Here again is the inferior horn, the hippocampus, right there in the floor of the inferior horn. All of this here is the thalamus. We're quite posterior now, as you can tell in the brain. So all of this is thalamus here. We're actually getting into the posterior parts of the thalamus Hello. there. Right here, we are in the midbrain and the pond. So it's a bit of an oblique section here through the brainstem, but you can see the cerebral aqueduct here. And of course, this is the pond. All right, so in this section here, you can see that we're now getting into the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle. This is the very, very tail end of corpus callosum there. You can see the cut surface here of the cerebellum. It's the middle cerebellar peduncle moving in there. And here you can see the central canal. It's gonna open up into the fourth ventricle, which will lie just on the other side of that opening there. In this coronal section, we can see both gray and white matter. White matter is the sum of all myelinated axons or tracts as they travel through the CNS. Gray matter is the sum of all nerve cell bodies. It can be seen here along this cortical band on the surface of the brain, which is why an increased surface area is so important to accommodate the large number of neurons in the cortex. Yeah. Gray matter can also be found in these deep nuclei of the forebrain, including basal ganglia and limbic structures. We're going to cut this brain in a horizontal orientation. It's in a vertical, it's in a horizontal. But... Okay, we're now going to cut through the brainstem here in an axial orientation. So here's the midbrain. Yeah. And here we've cut through the pons in the superior cerebellar peduncle as it projects to the cerebellum. So this is the last section here through the ponds, and you can see some of the deep oh, cerebellar nuclei here. 
In this cut here, you can see the inferior okay. part of the cerebellum. Okay. Such a thing like BT part of the BT part of the cut. Hmm. BT part. Ah. Inputting cerebellum. 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 Inputting cer